All right, video number 13, we're going to take a look at creating shapes by modification. What we have done in the previous videos now is we've created a couple of shapes. Uh, primarily, there's two main shapes that we have. We have got our decora receptacle and we have got our contactor. And we're going to take a look at extracting properties from a shape in order to create a new shape and save it so that we've got you know, more stuff to go and play with. So we're going to jump right into Visio here. Just give me a second to load that up and away we go all right perfect okay so on our last video we left off we had created this diagram we have the contactor we had the decor receptacle both of those are pretty and useful in their own rights but you can't do everything with those two we probably want to have a few other components as well so what we're going to look for is we're going to look for components that we can modify them into. I'm going to go and minimize my Visio right now. Uh, actually, first, I'm going to open up a new page. So you do have pages. They're kind of like tabs, same as you would. You have another one. We've got this page we're working on. I'll go over to this page over here. I'll commonly use them when I'm going to be duplicating stuff. I'm going to go and minimize this one. I'm going to go and minimize one more time. And I'm going to go down to my desktop where I have saved. A couple of things. Now we had the decor receptacle, which we drew through. We had the contact, which we drew through. We were going to do a 333 Marat originally in the workshop, but you know, that's too simple. We ended up doing the can twist instead. But what we do have is we've got this starter. I'll just double click on that one there. This is a full, you know, squared up frontal picture of a Schneider manual motor starter. Now you can see the similarities between this and between your contactor. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick modification, taking this into our contactor. A couple of things you should note though, uh, this thing is a little bit of a fisheye view on the camera. It will be the same width all the way around. It's just that this part up front over here, the knob is way closer than this part down here with the terminal. So it appears to be a little bit fattened, but it's the best frontal view that I could get on one of these ones. You have to look around online. Honestly, sometimes your best bet is go directly to the manufacturer's website, download the documentation. They will have PDF copies of the documentation. There'll be a nice, clear black and white picture of that component that's inside there. You then use a color picture to reference for your colors. Use the black and white to kind of copy over to get your shapes properties. All right, we're going to go and close this one. I'm going to do the same thing that I usually do with that picture. I'm going to copy that image. So I'm just going to go right click on it, copy. Now that I've got that copied, I'm going to go open up my Visio once again. And I'm going to go and paste this inside of here. Okay, we've got that pasted inside of there. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to resize this a bit smaller. Is we're going to go and take the Schneider that we have inside of here, this contactor, and we're going to place it alongside. And we're going to take a look at what's similar and, you know, what's going to be different. And we see that, I mean, basically these things are the same component, more or less, other than we're changing out the coil and a few other properties. So we're going to go and take this thing. We're going to ungroup it now. This is my contactor, a good one that I built. I'm going to ungroup it now because it got taken out of there. When I fool around with this shape, it doesn't affect that shape in there. That shape is fine. I can do anything I want to this. I can make it purple, you know, and it's never going to change what's going to happen to this. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to hit ungroup. When I do that, I get this pop-up window that says this action will sever the objects linked to its master. In other words, this component will no longer be the contactor as my uh, program understands it to be. And I'm fine with that because we're going to change it. So I hit the OK off of that thing. Once I do that, it's now broken, uh, broken down to multiple smaller parts. I'm going to go and just use box selects and I'm going to go partially over the shape. If you go all the way over the shape, you can select, you know, sometimes the background squares. I'm just going to go over top of some smaller stuff here, like the wiring, uh, the lettering that I have on there and stuff. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go and delete these ones over here. Uh, and then I'm going to go and take a look at these lines and I see that I can move that line probably. Oh, I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard up a little bit and I can move this arrow one down. Uh, maybe keep it up there a little bit. We'll see. we got to build this knob yet. And then we'll be able to build this one up over here. Once again, I am always building from a component because then you can download the PDF sheet. And then when your students ask you questions, you've got a PDF sheet. Save that as a separate file on your computer. I've got PDFs of all the components I've drawn so that when I assign stuff, I can also give them the same data sheet that they would get in the field. And they can, you know, research, read and understand from that. Okay, let's build this knob over here. The knob over here is a relatively straightforward one to go and build. We're going to start with a circle. I'm going to drag an ellipse on there. That line, the diagonal line means that it is squared up, but it doesn't always end up squared up. You can check that here in your size and position. Height and width should be the same if it is an actual 
one, that's good to go. Then I'm going to go and take a couple of boxes. We're going to stick one over top here. That's going to kind of form that longer handle. Don't worry too much about getting it just right to the same right height. And we don't want it to overlap on both sides. We're going to use some fragmentation later on. And then I'm going to make one more try a rectangle for this one over here. So it's going to be a long skinny rectangle like that. I'm going to go and overlap that one partially onto there. And then I'm going to grab all of these. So we'll go back to my pointer tool, grab them all. I'm going to do a alignment to the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fragment. And when I do a fragment, it breaks every place that we have lines that cross over. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to delete this chunk. So I click on it, hit delete, click, delete, click, delete. We've got that gone. And then I'm going to take this chunk and this chunk, and I'm going to go and do a merge or a union as it's called. And all of a sudden you have got that shape right over there. What we'll do now is we'll just go with a little bit of fill on it. Generally speaking, I go a little bit darker for anything that's background. So I'm going to go up here and you can pick a darker background color. So maybe like three down on this one and then pick this one over here as being just a little bit lighter. So it stands out and we leave that center indicator slot there as white. Now we've got all of these. I stick a box around the whole thing. We'll go group that thing up and boom, we have now got a knob that we are going to go and have. One more thing that we want to go and do on this knob, you see right now how this center thing, when I rotate it, it kind of rotates around the center of the object because this is the center part of that object right now. If when I place it on the device, I want it to rotate where I want it to be, you have to grab that point. You got to move it then up to where center is going to be. It's easier to do it beforehand. Um, but if I take a look at this now, I see that I've almost got it right. It's more or less centered. It just allows you to go and change the knob position on your drawing later on if you want it to be in the off, the trip, or the on position. Not too concerned about that yet at this point. Okay, we're going to grab this one. We're going to drag it in here. We see that it's size may be just a little bit large for what we want it to go and be. Uh, or maybe that this tail is a little long. You can always snip that off later on if you want. I'm going to place it right in over here. Drop that down over there. We've got a couple things that we want to place on there for the sake of, you know, education. We should have a little setting knob on there where they can go and set the overloads. And we should also go and show the zero, the one, and then the trip element that's going to be inside of there. Let's start by making that little trip element line because we haven't done a lot of line breaking. We're going to do that really quickly where I'm going to go and take a circle over here. So I find a true circle. In this case, it doesn't matter how big it is, but we got 10.8 by 10.8. Uh, you can adjust it manually as we've done before if you want. And then I'm going to go and take two lines, one vertical, one horizontal. I'm not trying to go and draw them perfectly because I'm going to grab them all, use that align center and align middle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have with this group, I'm going to use a tool that we haven't done a lot of, but it's called trim. And what trim does is it breaks lines apart. It Instead of shapes, it breaks into individual lines. So this is a line from point to point. Then wherever it crosses, it becomes another line. Wherever it crosses, it becomes another line. This is obviously the one that we are looking for. You could try to do it with your arc, but the arc there is a elliptical arc. And so it'll, you know, just won't work. So we're going to take this one. We're going to place that one out there. We're going to go and uh, we can adjust it a little bit. Ooh. If you want, you can make it a little bit larger. You could also have done this thing through an offset. So really up to you how you want to get around to doing this. But I'm going to go and place some sort of a little arc up top in here. Make a bit of modification until you feel like it's looking okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to show what's going on. Then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select one of these. I've got that Arial narrow font already, but I just usually grab it a piece. I'm going to do a control C and then I'm going to do a control V and I'm going to go and paste that thing out at least three times. And then I'm just going to label these zero trip one. And we're going to place them on there because they're positional markers. I don't stick a ton of marking on my drawings other than stuff that's really going to be, you know, critical to understanding the operation. So we have got our on, off and our trip positions now that are going to be labeled. When we take a look at that, we see that these components over here could maybe move down a little bit because that one's running into the green. Or alternatively, we could move that top bar up a little bit. It wouldn't make much of a difference. Once again, we're going for generalized, recognizable, you know, shapes, but we're not going for perfection with these things. Okay, so that's my zero. 
my trip and my one, we'll just move that over and up. I use keyboard moves for a lot of stuff just for making it easier over top. Last thing we need to do is uh, create that one. We'll do that one through just a merge. This one, because we are looking to create this as being relatively even, I don't care how big I make it, I'm gonna create one little rectangle, Control C, Control V, I'm gonna paste it so that way it's identical. Same width, same height, and then I'm just gonna place them so that they're aligned over top. You could also just grab them, do the align center and then the align middle so that they line up. And then I'm just gonna go and do a straight up union. Now we've created that center block over there. And then we're gonna go and take a circle. We'll place that around that. Now the circle, because we created last, came to the front. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and send that one to the back so it's behind there. And then we're just gonna grab these components and we're gonna make sure that they are all aligned center with each other and align middle. And then I'm going to go and take the colors that I have, and I'm just gonna make this thing, because it's a recess into here, make it just a hair darker. So it'll just go to that second one down there. And then this one over here, will go to that one over there, same as what I have on top of there. And if you really want, you could go and create a little, little uh, V on there, a triangle that you could use. Creating a triangle, there is no shape for that, but usually I just use my background grid We'll just draw one real quick. And I'll just use a straight line. I drag it down, I release, but I don't move my mouse and I re-click. That allows me to go and close the shape in, go to another grid and then go back up. And when I do that, we've now got a filled shape or a watertight shape, you know, it's a completely closed in. I'll click, close that down. And then we can just go and take this thing and place it wherever we want, you know, on our dial. So it's a relatively realistic looking dial. I'm now gonna take this entire group and I'm going to group it. I usually just use control G, you know, it works to group these components, but because we're doing this, you know, visually right now, we'll do it like that. And then we're just going to drag that one onto here. I don't bother with placing, you know, a ton of other markings on here uh, for what these are. The students should understand if you're teaching, you know, your motor control correctly, that this is where they're going to go and set their overloads off of that one. And then, you know, we'll drop this one down. Um, if you have got a model number, I do suggest putting it on there just because you might not, you know, forget, or you might end up with that same problem as me where you have extensive libraries with many components and you don't remember what is what. So if you have got that, control C, control V, and then I'll write, you know, GVP3 uh, because that's our GV3P, sorry. GV3P uh, is the type of manual starter and then that just gives me something to reference later on, you know, if I'm looking these things up. Okay, so we're almost done here. The last thing we need to do is we have to put connection points on because when we deleted and broke this component apart, we did lose all of those connection points that we had placed up top here. So we're gonna take the entire group now. We are going to go and ungroup everything. I always ungroup back down to the base units. It just eliminates glitches. Then you hit group one more time. We're good to go with that. Then we gotta go up to our connection points. So we've got this device selected. We're now gonna put connection points on there. So I'm gonna zoom right in, holding down control. I'm gonna drop those onto my components. Roll down to the bottom over here as well. Bottom and bottom. Uh, roughly centered underneath those screws. And now what we have is we've got that contact. It's a modification uh, that's now changed into that manual start. We'll delete that. What we'll do now is we're gonna drag it and put it back into our Schneider template. Okay, I'm gonna bring it over here and get a new pop-up that says the stencil is read-only. In other words, I don't have it open right now. Would you like to edit it so the operation can be completed? Yes, I do. That's gonna allow me to drag it in there. So now it's open that stencil, allowed us to modify, we've dragged it in. I'm gonna call that one a manual starter. And then we are going to go and click out of that. We hit save. And at this point now, we have done a modification and then a resave. It's beautiful because they're both the same size. So you can line them up on the uh, your panel drawing. They can look like it's on DIN rail or anything like that. But you have got connectable devices where you're actually gonna be able to run through from component to component. I know these lines are over top of each other right now, but you can you know square those lines out and around however you want. And you've got now connectable visual motor control components. It's fantastic gonna make your life so much easier. All right, that is that for this one.